Welcome back today. Things are fun. Things are spicy. We've actually got a legitimate win. We've got refunds for those who bought DLC, a community council with content creators, and more delays for page DLC. Colossal Order are fully admitting that the plan for City Skylines 2 has failed so far. But I think the real news here is that somebody at their publisher paradox had to approve all of this, and that is the thing we should be focusing on. Because while they've ultimately been to blame for all of the issues that their releases, because it's not just this game, all the issues their releases have faced thus far, it does now seem that somebody at the top has finally started listening to the players, maybe even to the developers, on the problem of releases simply not being good enough. You know what is good enough, though? Battler.games. It is the best way to support what we do. Um, but of course, over there, you'll get early access to our content. You'll get ad-free access to our content. You'll get Loading Screen, which we publish daily, and a bunch of other things like all of our research reports before I even see them. It is a pretty damn fun place to be. And honestly, in an era where AdSense just absolutely sucks, and uh, I'd rather we just cover stories we find interesting than things that algorithms give a shit about. It is, uh, I think, truly the path forward. So, Games, thank you to everybody who supports us there. With that said, oh boy, it's time to talk about Colossal Order. So, do you remember how just a few weeks back we covered how Colossal Order released the Beach Properties DLC for City Skylines 2? And we broadly kind of looked at the whole deal, and we realized that, well, this was launching just ahead of the financial year, and, and you just kind of thought that this was maybe some sort of hope that, I don't know, there'd be a surge of revenue before the filings had to be in. Uh, obviously, regardless of whether or not this DLC actually met the expectations of players, or developers, because it very much didn't. And in a way, this is good news, right? It is good news. This DLC failing is good for everybody, and assuming that no axes fall on top of them, as regards to, say, layoffs and such, it could be good for the developers in the long run as well. Taking a look here, we see all reviews mixed, 53%. Recent reviews, though, mostly negative, 29%. That is bad. What's happened then is that now, following the reaction to this DLC, DLC being pretty damn lackluster. Colossal Order are basically again being forced to adopt a crisis management strategy. And what they've done is they've decided to delay more DLCs. They have issued refunds and they say they're focusing on fundamentals and involving the audience more in their game. There is yet more evidence, though, that this isn't just something at Colossal Order because there are changes happening at the Paradox level, right? Obviously, looking through the last year, it's clear there's loads of problems with Paradox. I mean, even take Star Trek Infinite. The Stellaris Star Trek that basically got six months of support and then got Yote. They've had nothing but problems. So we're going to talk about the broader Paradox issue. First, though, let's talk about City Skylines 2 and the way forward. So this all comes from a post from Marina Halakainen. Uh, I think I got her name right, um, to the official forum, right? So this is what she said. We asked for your patience and support, and you've shown these. In return, we let you down. That's actually kind of stark. She goes on to say, We thought we could make up for the shortcomings of the game in a time frame that was unrealistic and rushed out DLC that should not have been published in its current form. It is so rare, because this isn't just a developer or PR person. This is the CEO. This is an executive. It is so rare that you see an executive just say, yeah, we let you down, we messed up, and to use specific words like rushed out a DLC. Often you'll see very massaged communications where the implication is that they know that you know it was rushed out and they acknowledge it was rushed out, but they're not going to use the word rushed out. Here though, she said rushed out, and I appreciate that. She then goes on to say, for all of this, we are truly sorry. When we've made statements like this one before, it's included a pledge to keep making improvements. And while we are working on those improvements, they haven't happened at the speed or magnitude of that is acceptable, and it pains us. We've now lost the trust of many of you. We want to do better. That is a hell of a statement. Of course, what matters, though, is it's being backed up with some change. Here is what they're doing. The Beach Properties DLC is now going to be free for everybody, and if you purchased it, well, you're going to be getting a refund. Now, for those who got it as a part of the Ultimate Pack, it is non-refundable because, well, the Ultimate Pack includes the base game. So, there will be new creator packs added and music packs created to increase the value proposition to those people, which Colossal Order prices at $39.99. Uh, 
she says, this solution hopefully ensures that you, regardless of purchase method, feel you receive fair compensation. So it's either your money back or in a situation where that's not really possible because of how things are operating the Steam backend, you are going to be getting more content than you expected. Now, of course, with the Beachfront Properties DLC, there was one aspect that really rubbed people the wrong way. And funny enough, it was palm trees. Now, palm trees, I don't recommend rubbing yourself off one. That will probably be rather painful. Uh, but no, the bit that rubbed people the wrong way is this is one of the first times, actually, no, it is the first time that they put a piece of environmental art in one of those packs, right? Um, a lot of people would say that a palm tree really shouldn't be a DLC thing. And the problem is, if you loaded up somebody else's map and it used a palm tree, something that most people think should be a standard uh, part of the game's kit, then, well, yeah, you'd load in the map, but there'd be a placeholder asset instead of a palm tree. So the idea of a palm tree or a bush or some shrubs being part of one of these DLCs, that's just something that the City Skylines hasn't done before as a franchise and people did not appreciate it. So that's the situation with the DLC, but then they say that they, quote, will be instituting immediate and meaningful changes in the way that we approach the game's development and our communication with you. Now, the focus is going to be on free patches and updates no new paid content. And this actually means that the Bridges and Ports expansion, which was part of that Ultimate Pack, will actually move into 2025, and any creator packs will be produced by a separate team to core development. How, of course, you may be wondering, will this be different from the last time that you guys said you would go and fix things up? Well, one of the ways is player involvement. They say they'll be putting together an advisory council that will include a small group of players representatives with sizable community followings, and these people will be given, quote, full transparency from Colossal Order and Paradox with answers for any questions or critiques. Um, presumably, they will be able to say things to their audiences. Again, I've got to imagine there'll be some degree of confidentiality there, but even though that could represent a little bit of a data risk, I think it is absolutely abundantly clear that if you're going to have a bunch of plans and you can see even, say even just the streamers, the YouTubers, run stuff through them, the mod makers as well, that actually does matter. Overall, I think this is good. I think it makes sense. And if you're doing that via creators, if somebody is able to get whatever sort of following, be it YouTube, Twitch, whatever, that does probably mean that they will pass a few different bars. Like they're probably not going to have completely unhinged opinions that their communities completely disagree with. So it's a useful way of, by only involving a small number of people, kind of getting a way to speak to the concerns of a very large number of people. That being said, I can obviously see that there's criticisms of that sort of uh, idea. Again, I'd be open to hearing what you think about that. There's a lot of other games that have done community councils pretty successfully. Even one example from a long ass time ago is EVE Online, which, yeah, had, what was it, the Council for Stellar Management? I believe they had that going for a long time indeed. Then finally, they say that the console release will be targeting October, pending a successful build delivery in April but the none of that is confirmed just yet. But what they can confirm is the console port team is separate to the PC dev team, so no resources are being lost. Ultimately then, this is a lot of promises. Does anybody have to believe Colossal Order in any of this? The answer obviously is no, you do not have to believe this. And a lot of this, you could say, does sound rather similar to what happened at launch. Now, when you take a look through forum comments and the Steam Hub, like, yeah, there is plenty of skepticism, and that's a completely justifiable thing, but there is all also quite a lot of just good faith responses there. But I think what's the most materially different compared to the last time is that council. That actually includes Paradox reps and that means that it will have definitely required their sign-off on planning. Also, refunds. That is Paradox money, right? Because, of course, whenever you buy this game, it's not like the money goes to Colossal Order, then gives it to their publisher. No, money goes to publisher, then it goes to Colossal Order. So, if refunds are being added, that does mean there's been significant buy-in to this plan from their publisher. Now, Obviously, I don't think that Beach Properties DLC was the, the hottest seller in the universe. So yes, there will be a, you know, a, a meaningless, I would say, financial hit. But I think the principle there does matter. Again, we even saw a similar thing going on with Total Warfare, where they realized, yeah, we completely took the piss with the initial pricing of that. Therefore, we're reducing the price and we're refunding you the difference. In either case here, the thing that matters is 
Paradox were directly involved. I think that's what's really worth considering here because ultimately they set the approvals for a game like City Skylines 2 releasing. And I suppose not. it's actually not even like that. They will set the deadlines that the developer has to hit. Okay. Often the way that this works is for a developer to receive continued funding from their publisher. The developer will be funded to make DLC, will be funded to make a game that will be all based on hitting milestones. So what can happen there is a developer can say, right, we obviously need to pay our bills, so we need to hit our milestone payment. The developer will submit a build, probably a release candidate build in this case. The developer can say, here's our release candidate. We highly recommend that you give us an extension and that this is not the version of the game that we release. From that point, though, it is completely the publisher's decision. And that does mean that ultimately, when a game like this ends up being a big disaster, the person to blame is the publisher. So that combination of doing the refunds and then effectively approving this game, entering a form of ongoing development that doesn't really involve a new potential for future returns because there's not going to be DLC for a while. That just shows, I mean, the ultimate admission of their loss. There's kind of no more money to squeeze here. They cannot squeeze more DLC. DLC won't help, and that means they have finally had to contend with the real problem. This, however, is not the only game that Paradox have done this for in the last week. We actually have got to talk about Victoria 3, because they are having their delays be applied proactively. Something, of course, I imagine the City Skylines developers really wish that they had. So in an update posted to Steam, Paradox have confirmed that the next major update in DLC for Victoria 3 will be delayed. So rather than May 6th, both the DLC and the free update that comes along with it, those will instead be launching June 24th. So basically, right, two months to refine things. And uh, two months, by the way, that can make an absolute shitload of difference. As for the reason why, well, they did actually provide a statement. Here's the quote. While we're happy with the features and offer for 1.7 and Spheres of Influence, we simply do not believe that sticking to the original release date will allow us to deliver those features in a polished and balanced state. And frankly, we do not want your enjoyment of them to be marred by excessive bugginess, crashes, or general lack of polish. This is good. And it's got to be taken in context, because like many of Paradox, Fox's games, Victoria 3 has a mixed rating on Steam. So that does mean that this is one of the team's big opportunities to turn things around, right? And when you go to the fan response, funny enough, it's broadly positive because if you're a fan of a game like that and you plan to buy DLC, you'd rather it's not shit. Of course, it remains to be seen if this is a change in attitude that will actually hold. Because look, some of this could make some, some revenue go down because they haven't earned the trust back yet. Your revenue will go up when the trust is back and you have new products. Now, you're going to have to delay your new products while you rebuild the trust. And that basically means there's going to be an uncomfortable period where a company has got to think about more than just the next quarter, right? Where a company's actually got to think about its five year, 10 year future and the true value of these IPs. But again, if you're talking about City Skylines, if you're talking about Victoria, EU, Crusader Kings, these are franchises that we can all see, let's be real, lasting for 50 years. I know that might seem like an absolutely insane thing, but why the hell not? People love Crusader Kings. Why can't there be a Crusader Kings 7 in 25 years? That probably would be good. Imagine what you could do. I mean, hell, imagine what a Crusader Kings even looks like, you know, in that future timeline. But the point basically is if you absolutely screw them now for the sake of some short-term money, uh, none of that will ever happen. And if you are a Paradox shareholder, that's actually the thing. Are you a Paradox shareholder who who is thinking a buy and hold 20 year strategy? Or are you just trying to rebalance your portfolio to whoever looks the hottest for the next quarter, right? That probably is the main decision here. And maybe if more investing was done with that longer term view, to, to be fair, Maybe if it was all done like that, then the market would probably lose a little bit of its price discovery sort of efficiency, but maybe it would gain other sorts of efficiency. I'm not particularly sure. I am not a big economics thinky man. I'm a small economics thinky man. Anyway, bad habits are hard to break. Paradox will need to stay the course, but seemingly they are listening. If you are players of these games, this is good news. And it needs to be clear, we can win. And we don't have to win by being unduly angry. We don't have to win by harassing people or doing any bullshit. We win by simply saying, this isn't good enough. Your value proposition needs to be better. 
if the game isn't ready, you need to let the devs cook. As simple as that. There's a lot of, you know, oh, just do something else. As an example, earlier in this week, we uh, published a video just laughing at the uh, price anchoring strategy of the Mythic skins in Overwatch 2. And a bunch of people in the comments were like, you don't have to buy them. Why do you care? I mean, I would care because ba I can't believe that I'm actually having to say back in my day. I'm 29 years old. I'm going to be 30 in like two months or whatever, but I'm 29. Why am I saying back in my day? How much of a degradation in what the consumer can expect to get by default have we experienced that I, as somebody who's 29, gets to say back in my day. That is absolutely goddamn insane. So to the people who are saying, why would you criticize Overwatch 2 for having uh, $80 Mythic skins? Because it's a bad deal and it doesn't have to be like that. It can actually be a game that calibrates itself to a long and happy future, not a short, embarrassing, cash-grabbing future where it's consistently shooting itself in the foot, making an absolute clown out of itself, and throwing the hardware work of its development team into the bin. As Connor very well put in, in today's research uh, document that, that we put together for this video, there's no more money to squeeze, and now they've had to do this. The thing with so many games is th there is more money to squeeze. Overwatch can keep squeezing for a while. It hasn't reached this point because it does have so much brand value, so much of a user base. But whenever you're in a situation like this, where, as they say, the riches are in the niches or niches, I suppose, as we say, you can't do that because if you destroy your niche, you're truly screwed. So a far broader game like Overwatch, it can keep squeezing and squeezing and squeezing for a lot longer. Feedback loop is so tight with something like City Skylines that we all very quickly know when it's went wrong. So it's important that we actually speak up about this sort of thing. If we don't, things will not get better. And it is only because people did not accept the slop that Paradox tried to feed them that City Skylines 2 is now headed in a better direction for everybody, including, funny enough, Paradox. Crazy industry. Anyway, this is good news. Just talk back respectfully. Let them know what you think and don't accept bullshit. And you can win and you can make a difference. Here it has literally happened. That is it for me today. Thank you for watching today's video. I'll see you back tomorrow.